Hey y'all, I'm back again and you know this is a weird time for me because I am I'm, I'm searching for answers myself. Uh, and I'm struggling to find the answers that I'm looking for. And So, I know that there's a lot of people out there, like me, who are looking for those answers. And I'm wanting to just, you know, testify a little bit that those answers are coming. They're going to come in God's time. We just have to have the faith to know that there's no prayer that goes unanswered. There's no question that's going to go unanswered. Uh, we have to have the faith to understand it, that sometimes the answer is going to be no. Sometimes the answer is going to be not now. Or just wait. I, I'm I'm doing something in the background for your benefit. And it's t for people like, like, you know, well, like uh, pretty much all of us, that being told to wait or not now is hard to accept. Uh, I, I, I went through this weekend trying to get clarity on something. And every time I thought I had clarity, something else would happen and change the change the route in which I was I was ready to head. And I'd find annoyance and then I'd find pure worship. And Man, I tell you this. Sometimes it's just fun to uh, uh, being part of God's kingdom because you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know w uh, w which way things are going to turn. We just know that I just know that it's for my 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 benefit and for His glory. Uh, and that's really all I need to know is that it's for his glory uh, it's like part of as I've said before I am part of a motorcycle ministry and I believe that you know as you know an evangelist, a missionary, you know, in the motorcycle community, that we have, we still have to stand apart uh, from from the world. That we can't, we can't reflect the world. We have to reflect God. We have to reflect Jesus, and not holding true to God's word is not an option for me. And I, I'm a little different. I think I've become a little bit different than most people in motorcycle ministry uh, for the simple fact that my big, one, of, one of my big annoyances is I don't believe in half the church because God's word says men should not cover their head while in the presence of the Lord. Well, if there are two or more gathered in his name, he is there. Therefore, my head and face better be uncovered. And so, therefore, wearing a hat in church is a no-go. And if I hurt anybody's feelings, I apologize up front, but I'm about to step on toes. Uh, I was... 
I was with, with some brothers and sisters at church, and I would say at least a good third of the men in, in, in the church service, including the pastor, was wearing a hat. Uh, that bothered me a lot. Uh, so that's not, you know, that's blending into the world, not staying in the world. That's not being, holding true to God's word. It's a disrespect to God. Uh, at the same time, we had a band playing uh, at the uh, worship service. And they started to play the national anthem. Most of those men took their hat off. I have a problem there. Are we worshiping our government more so than our God? Uh, is the national anthem more worthy of our respect than God's word? Yes, we should take our hat off for the anthem. It's to show honor to the men and women who have died for our country. It's to show respect for our country. But you must show respect to God first. Because God blessed America. It wasn't America that blessed God. America has turned away from tried to speak to, to one of them about it. They listened to me. I don't think they agreed with me, and that's okay. But I didn't speak up during the service like I probably should have. I bit my tongue. But the Lord didn't give me the, the, the impression to do anything other than like my tongue, that it wasn't the right type of place. That this wasn't, this weekend wasn't a time for a confrontation. It was a time for unity and brother and supporting brothers and sisters and recharging our batteries uh, by enjoying the presence of God in all the things we did. questions about the, the, the ministry that I've been part of, and I've been debating whether it's time to leave or stay, and I got, and it's the frustrating part of, I got the answer of, wait, I've been waiting for that answer for for a little, about, a little over a year now. I love my ministry. I love, I love being part of Bikers for Christ. I truly do. I love my brothers and sisters. But as, as my walk with the Lord has grown deeper, so has my questions of my place within the organization grow because it's becoming clear and clearer that sometimes I don't my my interpretation of what I, I read in the Bible and what the Lord lays on my heart are indifference to the uh, the ways of a lot of the people in the Bible of Christ. I don't believe
believe and preacher Dale if you if you see this please don't give me an I told you so or I you know or give me too much too much ribbing for this because I'm gonna tell you more than once you were speaking out of my mouth this weekend but you're you know and so yes you were absolutely right of things. There's still things we, we still disagree on, but we as uh, motorcycle missionaries, motorcycle mission, you know, mission work in general, ministry, we cannot get down in the ditch with the people we are trying to help. We must stay above and on the edge. Because, just like the lady said uh, in the service, when Jesus walked out on the water, when Peter stepped out and lost his faith momentarily and fell into the water, Jesus didn't fall into the water with him to push him out. He stayed on top of the water and reached down and pulled him up. We must be able to do the same. We, it takes less effort to pull someone out from above than to push them up from below. So we have, we must remain set aside. We must remain true to God's word. Or we are going to not, we are going to lose our effectiveness Because they are looking at us to be different. They are looking at us to be godly. And we have to show to the world that being a man of God or a woman of God, fulfilling God's word doesn't mean we don't have fun. Yes, I, I remember back in the, when I, I was lost that if I got religion, I had to stop having fun. I, I, I wish I knew then what I know now. That, you know, I have more fun, you know, sober. I have more fun doing things in godly ways than I ever did when I was doing things in the wrong way so much more fun and I don't I don't have to worry about regrets anymore I don't have to worry about hangovers and feeling bad I don't have to worry about the negative side effects of, of you know all the substances I put into my body to me the list so you guys if you agree with me, please share this. If you don't, let, let me know if you, why you don't agree. If, if you feel that what I'm saying is false, show me scripture. I understand we are not to know that we are not to judge. This is, when you're dealing with other fellow Christians, Bible talks clearly that we are to judge righteously. And if you're not following God's rules and God's word, we are expected to speak. Love you guys. Let me know. If, again, if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, as your Lord, as your Master, figure it out. And if you don't know how to do it, give me, just give me a shout. Hit me up in comments. Tell me that you know, you're lost. And I will, I'll, I'll let you know how to find him. Find him. Because he's knocking on your heart where you wouldn't be looking for that answer. He's just a, he's just a, uh, uh, he's just a, a word away. You just got to give your heart over to him.